Hi, everybody. I just finished up an interview on Fox, and so while I have the benefit of this camera and this cameraman, I thought I'd take a couple minutes to record what's really on my mind. Uh, to no one's surprise, there is an incredible amount of effort that's being expended right now to dial up concerns over systemic election problems. Some of that's fact. But some of what you're hearing is fiction. And because this is the issue that we exist for, I think we're in a unique position to add some context around a subject that really should concern every American citizen. So here's what I wish interviewers would ask me and what I'd say if they did. Is election fraud a real problem? Yes. How bad is it? Well, we have over 800 convictions listed in our online election crimes database, but that number does not scratch the surface. Because for every case of fraud that's actually run through the multi-year gauntlet of litigation that's generally necessary to get a conviction, another 100 cases are never prosecuted at all. So what about the stats that are being broadcast about the 1.8 million dead people on the rolls or the double registrations and the one in eight files being wrong? Is that true? Yes, it's all true. Those numbers were released in a study from Pew Center on the States way back in 2012. Gosh, that's old. Well, what's changed since then? It's gotten worse. So if election fraud is such a big threat, why is it so hard to find fraudsters? Aha, now we are getting to the real crux of the problem. The reason election fraud is hard to quantify is because the fraud has become institutionalized. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me give you a real-world example using Obamacare. Obamacare registered 12.7 million people just during their last enrollment period, just last year. All enrollee information is based only on self-attestation. What that means is when a voter's registration is completed in the Obamacare app, the info is piped directly to the enrollee's home state. No check for citizenship or, or for anything else for that matter. We regularly offer non-citizens opportunities to register to vote as part and parcel of other social services that Obama made them eligible for. And the resulting impact is that millions of illegal aliens could be voting in the upcoming election. And given our current process, we would be powerless to stop it. How can that be? Well, because if states try to determine the citizenship status of people on their voter rolls, they're sued by the federal government. If states try to implement common sense voter identification efforts, they're sued by the federal government. In fact, in 18 states right now, you can ask for no type of identification at all at the polls. That's insanity. If states try to prosecute election fraud, they are flattened under a dog pile of leftist special interest groups who will stop at nothing to suffocate the story. You see, the subversion of our elections is incredibly hard to detect by design. If you don't want the answers, don't allow the questions to be asked. Just suppress the truth, silence the opposition, and then agitate to gain political advantage. Does that sound familiar? So, to all would-be leaders, if you really believe that election integrity is the cornerstone of our republic, as you say that you do, then act like it. Offer solutions, not just more fear-mongering. Voters deserve to see your plan to solve what is a very real problem. And if you're looking for ideas, here are some places to start. Number one, make voter identification an imperative. If people need ID and don't have it, spend a little bit of money to get those people identifications rather than spending millions of taxpayer dollars in courtroom dramas that serve no one. Number two, close the loop on non-citizen registration. Does anyone really think that if an American went to go vote in Mexico or any other country, that that would be allowed? No, they have ID and they have processes to stop that, to prevent that. So should we. Number three, stop a radicalized Department of Justice. This agency, charged with dispensing justice coast to coast, has become a radicalized, weaponized enforcement arm of a hyperpartisan administration. The agency needs to be reorganized from the ground up. Number four, look at best practices around the world. We have been left in the dust technologically and we have a lot to learn. And finally, commit 
to a nationwide public relations campaign that will encourage citizen engagement in their government, not just to go vote, but to be involved in the process. Election integrity should unite us, not divide us, but that's where we are. People are not confident that their vote even matters, and it's one of the reasons that in the United States we have the lowest voter turnout among any other industrialized nation in the world. We need to expect more from our leaders, and frankly, we need to expect more from ourselves. In the end, my fellow Americans, our election process is broken because we, the citizens, just kind of left the field on this issue. We've got to get back in the game, and I'm asking you to join with us, not just now, not just during the election, but in the months and years ahead. Rest assured, True the Vote will be at work in ways seen and unseen to help get the job done. Because in the end, if our elections aren't truly fair, we aren't truly free.